Hi everyone, it's Tracy here from Art Fiber Stitch. Today we're going to experiment a little bit with needle felting. I've uh, found this little piece of high density foam, it's only thin, like a, a centimetre. Uh, but I thought, well, okay, we'll see if it works as uh, the pad behind, because you need something to poke your needle into. Um, so I've just got here a piece of brown felt. And we're going to try some different inclusions, some different things in it. So I'm, I've got this lovely green linen and I'm just fraying the edge and uh, pulling some holes in it and just popping it down. I have no plan for this. It'll be what it is. Um, but hopefully we'll learn some things along the way. Another thing I wanted to use was this, this lovely sort of webbing. Because it's got big holes in it, we'll be able to felt through that, no problem, I think. And uh, this here is paper, a fibrous kind of paper, but it's really shiny. I don't know whether that will work, but we'll give it a go. Um, oh, okay, yes, I have this too. And this is uh, another mesh. I've only just gotten this, I certainly want to play with it brown you see like a web so yeah I think that could go that would be the same as the the green be easy to go through that with the needle felting but this is a piece of uh, crystal organza I don't think it's going to be very successful if I use silk it all bunches up and it's all beautiful makes a lovely texture but this I don't know but I'm going to experiment and see because I like the way that it colored that felt I'm going to use some roving now over the top of some of these different things and just see if it works. So just a very fine amount and I'm just going to poke through all of those surfaces and see what happens. That's the way that you uh, you experiment and find new things. Well, that didn't do much. So I think it's this. I think it's just not thick enough. It's going. And I'm going to drag out my good old faithful hunk of uh, foam and we'll have another go at this but I have I have my doubts about that uh, that organza we can try it but, um... so with this we're just trying we're stabbing with the needle up and down and it's pushing the fiber through through whatever is on top of that felt and through into the back and into the sponge or the foam that I'm using. As long as you're up and down like that, it's fine. It's not going to snap your needle. It's when you turn your needle and pull it out. So let's have a look. Can we see any fibers coming through? Well, not many. Look at it. It's coming straight off. So, hmm, a couple of things. I think that that organza is not really very acceptable. I know in the past I've used linen and I know that it goes through that. You know, but this is a tight weave. It's, it's really not going to work, I don't think. See how it's sort of punctured little holes and made little ripples there, but it didn't really, it doesn't have any fibers to go through. So I'm not going to abandon it totally. I'm going to use some thin bits, thin cutout stripes or strips. Oh, I've got this one too. This is another new one that I've just gotten and it's glittery. Uh, it's green and it has some glitter and I just thought I wonder how that will look. Will that show through when we're finished with felting on the top? So let's layer a few things up and see how we go. Now the other problem I've got is sometimes your needle gets a little bit blunt. Those little barbs that carry the fibre through, well they can become more and more blunt. And so I just run your little fingers down it and see if you can feel anything on there anymore. And if not, grab a new one. That's what I've done. So I've grabbed some more of this lovely orangey browny um, roving, which is wool. And now I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down. We'll see. Is this going to hold it now? We've still got that chiffon in there. But we've got enough of the 
felt that it will go through and uh, you know we, we can do some stitching if other bits didn't work it's an experiment but here's what I love blending the colors with super fine layers that green when we put the orange over it it'll change the shade of it so we can bunch that linen up we could create some ripples we can shred it we can do a lot of things with that with that um, but let's just try a little bit more roving and we'll see if we can get a bit more of different areas tacked down and see where it goes see where it leads us like I say I don't have much of a plan but I like that we've changed this ordinary brown into quite a nice background and that orange that I used it sort of um, blends in with it I think there we go so I've given that a bit of a go you can see that shiny webbing and you can see all along here we've got bits of it have come through if you have a look on the side there you can see the fluffy back so let's try some other colors look at this those mohair kind of curls I think they're mohair I've forgotten now but look at that if we just pop a little bit of that bluey mauvey color in doesn't that look nice so just you can really finely um, spread it out or tease it out and then pop it on top and once you do look at how it's tinted the green it's tinted the orange it's really really good I'm liking that blue so I go over it again and just make sure I've stabbed everything down a bit and uh, hmm, okay so now I'm going to bring some more color green this time see how I'm teasing it out so it's nice and fine if you've got two colors that you've picked up it helps to blend them like that first before you put it down but where do I want it and that's the decision and I'll just keep playing and because I don't have a picture in mind it's just where I like color where I want to change it where I think it looks best Ah oh, yes this is our piece of um, paper well, it's kind of a fibrous paper they use it in floristry you know to uh, to wrap your bunches of flowers in but we can see if it works uh, pop some blue over there let's see if I can get that edge down it doesn't want to do it entirely but perhaps on those fibrous edges hmm. Oh, that looks quite nice it's got a great deal of shine and over here we've got that lovely shiny webbing the shiny paper and uh, that tint of blue on there I like that but it also holds down it was uh, more holy shall we say on the edges there was more holes so here's my box of goodies that I keep any leftover bits from any project I just keep in there and I have a palette there to use so this one is a really dark color some more roving I'm just going to pick it out and pop it somewhere who knows where just keep trying it try different things uh, and it'll probably be obscured anyway later when we add something else now here's the needle so here is where we find the needle is a little bit uh, a little bit blunt so I'm off to get another one now we're in business and I can see that it's working we're managing to punch it through and it's going through all of the holes that are in those uh, loose weave fabrics or the webbing or you know lace lots of different things I've used and here I am looking and thinking I don't know which way I want it up down uh, let's add some more and decide later so oh, and look at this this is great this is a bit of silk rod and uh, what do we have here this is a totally synthetic thing but uh, it's nice and shiny and I think if I tr I can trap it under some proper wool 
all goes through much easier than uh, well acrylic things yeah, some blue would be nice and sometimes it's about color what have I got there that aren't the colors that I want to bring in bits of yarn can be teased out and used oh yes some blue might be nice so we've gone from this brown and we're, now we're bringing in all of these delicious colors uh, I think I'll stay away from the pink, but those little bits of blue, I like that because I like that aquary teal colour. So here we go. Let's play with colour. But at some stage, I really must consider where do I want it? What is it? I, I don't think it's anything in particular. I think it's just a beautiful blend of colours. So I'm just going to do a nice abstract picture. But up, down sideways hmm. let's leave it like that for now and see what happens here i've got some um it's a silk and wool blend and uh but look at the color isn't that nice so i'm just going to do some lines that sort of um sometimes it'll i'll have it really fine and it will blend the color out beside it see like that and just pull out that web of um, very fine fibers and it's going through that linen see that's spreading it out there teasing it out where I want it to be I'm using the tip of the needle to move it around all my fingers so what will we go for next Oh, here's this acrylic stuff that I was talking about. It's like a string, but it, it is a yarn. But, you know, it it has this appeal for me. You'll find things um, that you didn't even think would work, but just have a look at things with different eyes and see what you have that you could uh, incorporate. It's really surprising when you start to play what you could use. But that won't just punch it through with my needle. I would need something on top of it. But I'll get there. Let's grab a bit of blue. Now if I, if I drape it very, very finely over, it'll still show. But I'm using that to trap it each side. Almost like couching, I suppose. But that wool fibre definitely goes through best. So using that in those thin layers works for me. And I'll just use an acrylic felt square uh, as the background. So it doesn't take much. It's so very uh, therapeutic to play with colour and, uh, and form like this. It doesn't matter. But really does teach you things about blending colors too i liked that blue a little bit more i think don't want to obscure that orange all the way but if i don't like it i can just pull it off well, i think instead i might go for this yarn that i have it's a a greeny aqua on one end it's just got so many colors in it. I love these. And uh, it's got a string there holding it together, the thick and the thin yarn. It's wool. So I can spread it apart and I can use that. You can use a lot of yarns. It's a, a really good thing to experiment with. It adds to your color palette. But, you know, where do I want it? Is that too much? It's looking a bit like a leaf. I don't know that I want a leaf. I want it more hmm, abstract in this one. And look at how much I can get out of it. I can really thin it down. I might just, it's just too much, I think. Oh, that's getting there. When you think you have it where you want, you know, just give it a little bit of a prod with the needle in and out. 
Yeah. And see what happens. If you don't like it, pull it off. It's that easy. So I don't really want all of that. I'm just going to pull that off there. There. Isn't it fun to look into something and see what you think it's turning into? It's really just going to be like ripples almost. I do like a wavy line. And see how I'm bringing in these colours and it's coming from the top left and through out through the bottom right. This that I'm looking at now that was still in that box is the um, silk rod. I like the colour. And I like it, you can pull it out like this and it will also felt. It will felt in. But it uh, just adds a little something, a little bit of texture there. I like it. So I'm just going to try and pop a bit of that in as well. You know, I think this one looks almost like, you know, if you looked at the earth from above. Have you ever seen those photos or been up in a plane where you look down on a river and... Uh, and it appears like this, you know, flowing across the landscape. Well, that's what I'm thinking at the moment anyway. I might change my mind. So I'm just having a bit of a tack down. If it won't, I'll just put a very thin, thin layer of that uh, wool over top. Just in places, just to tack it, like I say. If you haven't had a go yet, you know, it can be a very inexpensive, fun craft. It's really therapeutic to be stabbing something continually. Gets your frustrations out. But look how, how lovely it is, how it blends. It's like painting. And look on the back, you can see all of the colours of the different fibres that have come through. It's melding with that background. And now it can uh, easily be flung about. It'll be um, quite adhered to that. I'm putting away all of that at the moment. I'm thinking we might do a bit of stitch. I'm liking that it flows. I'm thinking that's what I want. Some more lines flowing. Look at this though. Can you see with these close-ups, the blending of the fibres and the, the bits of the inclusions, the webbing that we put underneath or the shiny glittery or the paper all of those things are showing still but they're trapped in in amongst those layers i love that nice i really do think the answer is in the very fine layers that that seems to really look beautiful well, let's grab some, well, in this case, it's some wool. Eight ply yarns I have in different colours that I've put in a box. That's the probably the original kind of colour. And that's, well, that's been in there too. Just grabbing a couple of colours out that uh, are sort of, that one might be a highlight. No, I don't like that one. So I like colours that are already in there. To start with and then I figure it out later what I want to do. So we'll have a look at these ones that we've got out. I'm going to start with this lovely burnt orange because I want to bring a little bit more of that colour in. Ah, uh, But maybe I could do this. Maybe I could just bring that in. Doesn't that pick it up? Yeah, I'm really going from that. Uh, I'm thinking this does look like the world from above, you know, the floodplain, something. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've grabbed another one of those wools that is uh, thick and thin and uh, dyed so that it's green on one edge and through pale orange and it goes to a brownie orange and it's just really good. I like variegated yarns. And this one here, I'm going to do that kind of thing so it flows out that side again. Back with my sponge, my foam block. 
and we can spread this out or we can use it chunky we can do either we might do both here I'm spreading it out a bit but then I can also use the needle to just start to tack it down I will couch it later but this sort of puts it where we want and you know it's holding it in place it's tacking it so there we go something like that so now I'm going to grab some thread and so you can see here I've already started I've done a little bit of stitching there to hold that down with the orange uh, sometimes I stitch over it sometimes I stitch through it here I've done a little bit of chain stitch just a couple another couple there uh, you can do so much with very simple stitches uh, I only use I don't know not very many but I'm going to have another go here I'm going to use uh, this teal color and I'm going to start in the same spot and sort of move it around a bit blend it a bit I did a bit of seed stitch down on the bottom right corner with the leftover of that orange and now I'm going to uh, start here with that uh, the seed stitch as well I'm just deciding but that's a good start and then I can sometimes trap more of that orange down if I didn't like uh, too much of that orange showing I could obscure it by going over a bit you know I'm a bit undecided about those big loopy chain stitch ones I did so I'm just obscuring it a tiny bit but you know you don't have to undo things I just like seeing whatever it leads to I see those lovely little seed stitches I think that we could do quite a lot but I'm thinking we shouldn't do it all today part two I think we'll bring in stitch and uh, although I've done a tiny bit um, I'm going to stop now and we'll do it next time. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's so much fun and so beautiful. Uh, so there's that stitch. I just did a bit more running stitch. That's where I'm leaving it. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to press like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Part 2.